Okay. Today we're going to be using a paper target. In this case, a couple of newspaper circulars that everyone gets mailed to their house, sometimes thought of as junk mail. But today we're going to be using them as a target. Mom or dad or some grown up in your house can hold the target. You're going to want to make sure that as you're kicking the target, that you don't strike the person's hand. Parents, I don't have a glove today, but I would suggest for your own safety, maybe wearing a, uh, a thick winter glove or a thick leather gardening glove to protect your fingers. But remind the kids that your fingers are delicate and you want to be careful not to get kicked in the hand. I'm going to be holding the target, the, the newspaper out in front of me, and I'm going to tip it forward on a 30 degree angle. Andrew, we're going to start with a front kick. I like you to kick it with the ball of the foot. Very nice. Let's do five. One. Kip. Two. Uh, three. Uh, you can see that Andrew is using care not to hit my fingers. Four. Uh, five. Uh, now Leo's turn. I'm going to hold the paper out away from my face. I'm going to tip it up on a 30 degree angle. For a beginner, 45 degrees might also be okay. One. Loud key up two. Three. Four. And five. This was the front snap kick. We will now do the jump front snap kick using the front foot. On the jump front snap kick, the front foot will kick. Demonstrate. But the back foot also has a job. The back leg has to pull up. The knee needs to come up to give the body lift. Andrew, show me how you pick your knee up. Very good. Now we'll do the entire thing. One. Round key up. Two. Up. Be careful not to go too high. There's no sense in having someone fall down and getting hurt during the quarantine. Kick. Up. Two more. Loud key up. Kick. Up. And kick. Up. Very good. Let's have Leo try. Leo, remember to pull your back knee up to give your body lift. One. Up. And keep your hands up, always protecting your face. Two. Up. Very good. Looks like my paper is taking a beating today. Three. Up. And four. And five. That's what happens when you train your students to be too strong. The next kick will be the axe kick. I'd like you each to practice right now while I gather my target. Ten axe kicks. When you're finished, do ten with the other side. hold the targets out in front of me. Once again, not worrying about going too high today. We don't need any slip and fall accidents. Okay, Andrew, you're going to kick the target five times with each foot. Being careful not to strike my fingers. And then five with the other side. One. Two, keep your hands up. Three, always protect your face. And Leo. Ready, one. Notice the axe kick starts high and then chops downwards. Continue. Keep your hands up. When you're at home, moms and dads remind the students to keep their hands up, protecting their faces. If you have a piece of cardboard box, it may work better than the newspapers. You might also use something like a pillow. I know a lot of our students have invested in a pork chop hand target when asked to do so before. That certainly is paying off right now. Lastly, we're going to be doing the roundhouse kick. Now the front kick works on a vertical line. The axe kick works on a vertical line. The roundhouse kick needs to work on a horizontal line. Imagine a plus sign, front kick, X kick, there's the vertical line. 
horizontal line, the roundhouse kick. In order to do that, the plant foot, the one on the ground, must pivot. Okay, Andrew, roundhouse kicking. Good, pivot that front foot, pivot more. It's difficult to do in the grass with shoes. And Leo, pivoting roundhouse kick. Remember the key once again is to pivot the bottom foot. We call that the plant foot. One more. And Chanyo. It's your game. Remember parents at home, any kind of a hand target, a pillow, a piece of cardboard, or as I was using simple newspaper circulars are great. Not a bad idea to wear a leather or winter glove on your hand to protect your fingers. Enjoy, and we hope to see you back in the dojang very, very soon.